Hi everybody, it's Brian here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at ways in which you can put into practice to make your first 100 sales. So whether you are just starting out a Redbubble shop or whether you've been at this for a number of weeks now and still haven't yet reached that important milestone, this episode is for you. Let's get to it. And as always, before we get on to today's video, if you're new to this channel, my name is Brian and I create videos to help motivate you with tips and advice for your print on demand business, be it Redbubble or otherwise. So before we move on, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a new video. I upload videos every Wednesday and Saturday, and with that said, let's get on with today's video. Okay, so the first tip out of the eight that I'm going to be sharing with you today is effectively to take it seriously. This type of business, if you want it to succeed, you have to give it the time and the dedication it deserves. It's not enough just to upload once, then stay away from it for a couple of weeks, and then upload another word design, and then do the same thing again. Redbubble rewards shops that actually give in the time and dedication to upload designs Remember, Redbubble is in the business to make money too as well. And they will reward shops with exposure if they see that you are being dedicated and putting in the time to upload the designs. If you're not, then the chances of making consistent sales isn't going to be good. Okay, So you have to make sure that if you're going into this business model, you have to give it the time and dedication that it needs. Otherwise, you're not going to be as successful as you would hope to be. Tip number two is all about searching for trends. If you're new to the Redbubble game, one of the best things that you want to do in order to try and gain a lot of sales quickly is to design for trends. And basically, you want to search for things that are trending at the moment and create designs for that. So one of the fastest ways of finding out what's trending on Redbubble is by using Redbubble itself. So you open up a Redbubble website and then click on the search field and simply type a letter, any letter of the alphabet. And when you do so, Redbubble is going to give you some trending topics that are obviously trending on Redbubble. And what you can do is you can either consider whether or not you would like to design for those or continue your search by clicking in another letter or a combination of letters. It's up to you how you want to go about doing it. But this is a great way of finding out what's trending on Redbubble at the moment. Another useful tool that you can use to help cut down on the processing time is a website called Bubble Trends. All right, and here I have a screenshot of Bubble Trends here. And as you can see here, it's giving you the first three trending topics at the time of publishing this video per letter of the alphabet. So you have the first three of A, the first three of B, first three of C, D, and so on and so forth. This is a screenshot, so it's not going to continue going on. But you get the idea. I'll leave the link to this website in the description down below. Then what you can do first and foremost is check to see if the particular keyword phrase is trademarked and you can do that by visiting a website called Trademarkia. If you're uncertain about how to go about doing that, I created a video not too long ago about copyright and trademark. I would highly recommend that you have a look at it so that you can see how you can go about checking to see if a design that you wish to create something for is or isn't trademarked. Then once you've chosen on a particular keyword phrase, you can then go ahead and design for it. What's also important is that when you create a design and upload it to Redbubble, you're very selective in terms of what products you want that design to show up on. A newbie mistake that a lot of newcomers do is they basically turn everything on in terms of the products that are available for that design without actually even stopping to see whether or not the design looks good on the product. And this is a huge error in judgment when doing something like that. Avoid this at all costs. Why? Because if a customer is coming to your shop and they see that you didn't take the time to ensure that your designs are looking good on the products, well, why would they want to spend money in a shop for a person who doesn't even take the time of day to make sure that the designs look good? Remember, online sales is all about trust and professionality. If a customer visits your shop and they feel a sense of trust and that there's a degree of professionalism coming from your shop, then they're going to be more open to the idea of sifting through what you have to offer and perhaps clicking the ads to cart button and making a sale. 
So it's very important that you actually give the time of day for your shop and that you make sure that the products that you have your designs showcased on look good. Some of the more popular products on Redbubble that do really well are stickers, kids clothes, jigsaw puzzles and greeting cards, particularly around the holidays. So you want to make sure that the designs you are uploading are going to look good on these particular products, as is I'm sure you would make sure that they look good on all of the products that you upload. But those four do tend to do really well and it would be in your best interest to make sure that those are the products that you're showcasing on your shop. When you start seeing sales coming in, analyze on what products your designs are selling on and then with respect to other designs or with respect to forthcoming designs, make sure that in the thumbnail that you can choose on Redbubble to showcase your design, it's that product which is selling well for you that is being showcased on your, on your Redbubble marketplace. So for example, if you have a number of designs and they've been really selling well on postcards, well, when you come up with future designs and you're going right down to the bottom of Redbubble just before you click the upload process, you're given the option in terms of what product Redbubble should show your design on. By default, it's set to optimize. That means that every time somebody refreshes the page or visits your, your page for that particular design, it's always going to be shown on a different product. For some instances, that might work well. But if you are getting a number of sales, say, for example, with postcards, greeting cards, then what I would recommend that you do is that with your future designs, go through the product selection box and actually choose postcard slash greeting cards as the default setting for the product for your design to be shown on. This way, you're increasing your chances once again of making a sale because if people are coming to your shop in the hopes of finding some really cool interesting postcards or greeting cards, well, you're giving them just that. Tip number three, check your data. Go onto your dashboard, find out what products are selling, find out what products in your shops are getting favorited, and then start creating variations of that design so that you can upload multiple variations of it. In this way, you're throwing out a larger net to catch as many potential customers as you possibly can for those particular design. Remember, if you've made a sale, it's a sure bet that perhaps two or three other people have visited your shop, probably saw that design, liked it, but not enough to click on the add to cart button because maybe perhaps it wasn't the color that they were hoping for or perhaps they were looking for a text-based design, but your design was a graphic text design. So what you might want to do is that if you've made a sale on that particular design, go ahead and create a text-based version for it. Go ahead and create a graphic text-based version for it. Then create different variations of colors. For example, if your design was a white font on black, create one which is black text on white. Try to also come up with multiple variations in terms of color, multiple variations in terms of font. Perhaps in doing this, if one particular font appeals to one person, another type of font might appeal to somebody else. And you are again throwing out a large net to catch as many customers as you possibly can to increase your potential amount of sales. And if you're uncertain about how to create different color variations, I uploaded some time ago a video which shows how to do this. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's super simple to do. It's very fast to do and can really increase the number of uploads that you can provide to Redbubble exponentially. Okay, tip number four, be consistent and stay motivated. So let's break these down into two. First of all, be consistent. Again, as I stated earlier, Redbubble rewards shops who are consistently uploading with more exposure. Now, for some people, being consistent could mean simply just uploading one design a day, and that's fine, so long as you're being consistent and uploading that one design daily. Others, it might mean 5, 10, 15, even 50 designs a day. Again, it also depends on your particular circumstances. Whatever number of designs you feel comfortable with uploading on a daily basis, that is the number to be consistent with. So that Redbubble will see your dedication, Redbubble will see your consistency, and actually reward you handsomely with more expo exposure, which effectively could mean more sales for your shop. It isn't enough just to upload a couple designs, take a break, and then go back. I mean, if you take a break once in a blue moon, that's not going to be the end of the world. But some people expect that they're going to upload just one or two designs, take a couple days off, come back, and expect to see 100 sales. It doesn't work like that. You have to give in the time and dedication, as I stated in tip number one, and be consistent. And in addition to this, you need to stay motivated. Remember, selling on Redbubble and other print-on-demand sites 
is a marathon. It isn't a sprint. You're not going to come into this game expecting to become wealthy overnight. It's just not going to happen. But there is a lot of potential of being very successful if you are consistent and you stay motivated. There are days where you're going to find that you've received some sales. There are the days where you're going to receive maybe just a sale or two. And there will be days where you don't receive any sales at all. Whatever the case, don't be disheartened. Keep progressing, keep being consistent, plug away, design, upload, and you will reach that 100 sale milestone. Tip number five, quantity over quality, sometimes. This is a real important thing to consider. There are a number of people, myself included, who tend to be perfectionists with respect to the designs that they upload. And while that's honorable, for the print-on-demand business, that's not necessarily needed. Why? Well, if you become too much of a perfectionist in this game, then it's going to take you longer to get your designs out. And if it takes you longer to get your designs out, well, there's less likely that you're going to be making those kinds of sales that you're hoping for. So it's really important that when your design is just good enough, and that's the benchmark you should keep to, just good enough, get it out there, upload it, and move on to the next design. Remember, artwork, design, is all subjective. For you, it might not be where you want it to be, but for somebody else who's seen your design, they might say, wow, that's the best design I've ever seen. And they'll click on the add to cart and make the purchase. So don't get caught up too much on perfectionism. Obviously, you want to provide a quality design because if it's not, then people aren't going to buy it. They're just going to scroll through and you're not going to make any sales. But if there's a degree of quality to it and people can see that you've spent a good amount of time creating that design, then you're going to be rewarded down the road with somebody hopefully finding it, liking it, and making the sale. So again, don't get caught up in perfectionism. Create, upload, and move on. Tip number six, promote, promote, promote. This is so important. Don't be scared to show your designs via social media. Again, Redbubble does reward shops who are consistent by giving them exposure and showing designs to people. They do a lot of marketing, which is fantastic. and It's one of the reasons why I love Redbubble so much. But you also have to take the bull by the horns and actually do some promoting yourself too as well. Remember, the more promotion you give for your designs, the greater the likelihood you're going to be making sales. One of the best platforms, in my opinion, for promoting is using Pinterest. Why? Well, Pinterest is a search engine. Actually, it's a visual search engine. A lot of people visit Pinterest to find designs, to find things to buy, to find gifts, particularly in the fourth quarter. And if you market your designs and upload them to Pinterest, they're going to have longevity, which effectively means that your design, your mock-up of your design is going to be there so far as long as Pinterest is going to be up and running. This is great because when you think about that there are over 450 million monthly viewers on Pinterest, that's a huge market to tap into. And if you can do that and be consistent with uploading to Pinterest as you would with Redbubble, then Pinterest is also going to reward you handsomely by showing your pins to other people. And this is why it's a lot better than say Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter, and even Facebook for that matter. Those are all great platforms, but those platforms are just daily platforms. There's no longevity. Once you put something up, after a while, it's going to disappear. And that's not what you want. I mean, it's okay to show it to show people what you're doing in the moment. But if you want something that is going to be working for you in the long term, you definitely want to use Pinterest. Now, you may or may not know how to use Pinterest, or maybe you've opened up a Pinterest account and then just forgot about it. In either case, I published two videos about Pinterest, which I would like to invite you to have a look at. One basically shows you how to set up an account, create boards, create pins, and actually put up keywords that will help you be found in Pinterest. And another video shows how to create eye-catching pins so that people will see your pins and actually want to stop to take a look. Again, I will leave the links to those two videos in the description down below. The seventh tip all pertains to Timing. Now, this is fundamentally important if you're going to be working with any form of print-on-demand website. You have to keep in mind that when you are creating a design for a particular holiday or niche, what have you, you need to make sure that you are giving enough time for the customer to be able to buy it 
and to be able to receive it in the post in time for them to be able to use whatever it is they've bought from you for whatever reason they've purchased it for. So for example, let's take Halloween. Halloween obviously comes on the 31st of October. At the time of publishing this video, we are, in, we are just past the midpoint of July. For me, uploading to Redbubble with respect to Halloween, I would start getting up my designs during the middle of August. Why? Because again, you want to make sure that your designs are going to be indexed accordingly on Redbubble, that people are going to have enough time when they start thinking about wanting to get things for Halloween to be able to find your designs on Redbubble, and then most importantly, being able to order it and receive whatever they've ordered from you in time to be able to use it for Halloween, which is on the 31st of October. It makes no sense to upload something pertaining to Halloween on the 15th of October, because the likelihood of them receiving it in time for the 31st is going to be few and far between. And if somebody gets the product that they've ordered after November, well, what's the point of using it? They're just gonna have to shelve it and use it again the, the following Halloween, which is probably gonna be very disappointing. So make sure that you choose your timing correctly when you upload your designs. Don't start thinking about doing Christmas designs, for example, at the end of November. It just doesn't work. Ideally, with respect to Christmas, you start working on your designs now and you start uploading towards the end of September. Remember, people start looking for Christmas things as early as October and then they go to full force in November. So make sure that your designs are up there to increase your chance of making those sales and obviously reaching the 100 sale milestone. Keep in mind people, the fourth quarter, which is effectively from the beginning of October till the end of December, is the biggest time of the year when people open up their wallets and buy things for gifts. In the fourth quarter, just alone, you've got Halloween, you've got Thanksgiving, both in America and in Canada, and then obviously the biggest holiday season of the year, Christmas. You want to make sure that you are designing for those and getting your designs up in time to make sure that you reach those customers in good time. Just as a side note, more and more people are starting to shop online, particularly after these last two years. In the US, Americans, who are the world's biggest spenders, will spend close to $1 trillion this coming Christmas season. Of that, $150 billion of sales will be made online. Just imagine tapping into a fraction of that and what that can do to your sales. So, timing, get your designs up there, and then promote the heck out of them so that people will be able to see them so that you can make more sales to not only reach the 100 milestone, but to exceed it and go on even further. Tip number eight, know your shop. It isn't just enough to just create designs and upload them. You have to visit your dashboard once in a while to see what's going on with your shop. Find out what is selling and what isn't selling. And then with respect to those designs that are selling, well, double down on those. It doesn't make sense to stay wasting a lot of time creating designs you're uncertain whether or not they're going to sell when you have designs that are selling but you don't have enough variations of them. So double down on those designs, create variations of them, analyze the analytics in your shop and get to know what is being sold and then create more designs for those. This will definitely help save you time because you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about what to design. All you have to do is just take that design create different variations of it and upload. You know, it's like eat, wash, repeat, eat, wash, repeat. Same thing with respect to design. Design, variate, upload. So there you have it everybody. Eight actionable tips that you could put into practice as from today to help get your shop ready for the fourth quarter. And most importantly, to help you reach that very important milestone of your first 100 sales. It's not something which is impossible to achieve. It just takes a little bit of patience. It takes a little bit of dedication. But with your patience and your dedication, there's no reason in my mind why you cannot achieve that too as well. If you've stuck it out to the end of this video, thank you very much. Again, if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon. We'd love to have you join us in our community. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now.